Hello kids, in this edition of Dr. Zoon, we'll design CO2 dragsters. We'll search for ideas, make a working drawing, cut out a prototype, and shape it. All this and more today on Dr. Zoon. Hello kids, Dr. Zoon here. Today we're going to be talking about dragster design. CO2 dragsters, that is. They go down a 65-foot track in just about one second. You know, kids, it's a really exciting activity. Basically, what we're going to do is turn a block of wood like this into a dragster like one of these. The CO2 dragsters operate on the basis of a CO2 cartridge, which is filled with CO2 gas, being in the back end of a CO2 dragster like this one. There's a mechanism on the track that will puncture a hole in the CO2 cartridge and the CO2 gas will escape rapidly out that hole propelling the dragster down the track. Let's take a look at a real CO2 dragster race. Wow! Those dragsters really go down that track fast, don't they? What makes them go down the track anyway? As I said, the CO2 propels them, the CO2 in the back of the dragster, but what is it that's really causing that? Well, there was a fellow back in the mid-16th century, Sir Isaac Newton, that came up with some laws of motion that pertain here. The third law of motion, says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So when the hole in the CO2 cartridge is made and the gas releases, the gas comes out this way, forcing the car to go this way. This is the action, the gas coming out of the CO2 cartridge. The reaction is the car, or the dragster, going in the opposite direction. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That's Newton's third law of motion. It's important to understand that the wheels of a CO2 dragster are not driven by a motor, but the gas that's propelling the CO2 dragster down the track is providing the propulsion. So we don't have to worry about traction between the wheels and the track. Newton's second law of motion also gives us some good advice on dragster design. Newton's second law basically says that the acceleration of an object is proportional to its mass. In other words, the heavier or the more mass that an object has, the less that it will accelerate with a given force. For instance, we may have two blocks of wood that have different masses. These actually happen to be two types of wood. This is a balsa wood, and this is a basswood. Typically, the basswood will be heavier than the balsa wood, but it's also stronger. Let's find out what the relative mass of each one of these blocks is. Let's try the balsa wood blank. We'll put it on the balance, and it has a mass of 94 grams. The basswood blank has a mass of 278 grams, quite a lot heavier. If we cut out the same dragster out of these two blanks, the balsa wood being lighter and the basswood being heavier, and we applied the same amount of force to each one, which one do you think would be faster? The lighter one, of course, because of Newton's second law. The motion of a CO2 dragster going down the track is like this. What slows that dragster down? According to Newton's first law, it should just remain in motion unless acted on by an external force. Well, the external force in this case is friction. Friction in the CO2 dragster is what slows the dragster down. The force of friction acts against the forward motion of the dragster, slowing it down. There are two types of friction involved in CO2 dragsters, rolling friction and aerodynamic friction. Air coming against the front of the dragster also slows the dragster down. 
The drag, or the aerodynamic drag, as it may be called, must be considered as we design our dragster. Drag is the friction that results as the dragster collides with air molecules as it goes down the track. Newton's three laws of motion can help us design a dragster that will go down a track very, very quickly. The single most important factor in CO2 drag racing is the mass or the weight of the dragster. As I said before, choosing the type of wood can influence the mass of the dragster. But you have to consider also the trade-off of strength within that mass. For instance, in a car like this, if we have a very strong wood where we have this thin part of the dragster, then this dragster will withstand the racing process. But if we have very weak wood, such as balsa wood, in a thin portion of a dragster like this, then this dragster might break when it goes down the track. <coughs> Another thing to keep in mind as you're designing your dragster is that the minimum mass of your dragster may be dictated by the competition that you're participating in. For instance, TSA competitions may have a mass of 45 grams as the minimum mass that your dragster can be. Each competition will have their own set of specifications which you will need to follow as you design and construct your dragster. These specifications on this go-no-go -no -go gauge include things like the body width and wheel diameters and placements of the axle and screw eyes. The second most important factor in CO2 drag racing design is friction, rolling friction that is. With a dragster like this, we have friction between the wheels and the surface of the track, and we also have friction where the axle connects to the body. There will also be some friction where we have the screw eyes running along a fishing line on the track. We want to minimize friction as much as possible on these surfaces, and we'll talk about that more when we construct our vehicle in another video. The third factor in designing a fast CO2 car is aerodynamics. That is, how the airflow goes across the dragster. For instance, on a dragster like this, we have several places where air, when it's traveling across the dragster, will come against protruding articles like this guy's nose. This nose will block air molecules as it's going down the track. And this forehead and these shoulders also trap air molecules and provide more friction. Compare the dragster we just saw to this dragster, which has smooth lines all the way down the dragster. You look at the dragster from the front and you don't see protrusions that are going to catch the airflow. This is very aerodynamically sound. We know about the science behind CO2 drag racing now, so let's take a look at some ideas for a design for your dragster. For instance, we might look at a dragster like this. This design has a wedge-shaped design. In other words, it starts at a point here and travels basically in a wedge direction towards the back. Another example of a design might be a rail car where you basically have a rail or a slender portion of the dragster body expanding into a wider portion towards the back. Another popular design, although more difficult to make, is a shell car or a teardrop design, which basically has a body shaped like a tear. It's very aerodynamic. Notice, though, that the wheels are inside of the car's body. As you're contemplating how to design your CO2 dragster, you may want to collect some books and videos to get ideas from. For instance, you may find a car like this one, which really appeals to you, 
and you may decide to make a dragster that looks just like this. You may also want to look at how real top fuel dragsters are put together. This may give you some design ideas as well. Once you have an idea for your CO2 dragster design, you'll want to make a couple concept sketches like these, which are included in the book that comes in your metric dragster kit. Here's a sketch of a concept that I have for a CO2 dragster, and this is the one which we'll be constructing over the next few videotapes. The next step in the process is to make a working drawing of your CO2 dragster. This would include the top view, which is the view from directly above the dragster, and the side view, which is what the dragster would look like from the side. To do this, you could use a drafting board, or you can use a computer CAD program or drawing program. Notice that we've indicated by dotted lines where the CO2 cartridge hole will be. Also notice that we have dotted lines showing where the axle holes for the dragster will be. At this point, we need to be sure and check that our drawing is within the limitations of the specifications for our contest. For instance, if the overall length of the dragster is within the spec, or if the overall width of the dragster is within spec. Once you've made the working drawing for your CO2 dragster, you'll want to make two or three copies to help in the construction process for your dragster. Kids, if your teacher does not require prototypes, then you're done with this video at this point. But if your teacher wants you to do a styrofoam prototype, then pay attention to what's coming next. The first step in the process of making our prototype is to cut out one of the copies that we made of our working drawing. Once we have the side and top view of the working drawing cut out, we're going to attach those to the styrofoam blank. We'll put the side view on the side of the styrofoam And we can attach that with some scotch tape. While we draw around it with a marker. Once we have it marked, we can remove our top view. We'll apply the top view to the top of the styrofoam block, aligning it with the back end of the block, and again, attaching the drawing with scotch tape to hold it while we draw around it. Draw around the outline with our marker. And then we remove the working drawing from the top. And now we have the top view of the dragster and the side view of the dragster on our styrofoam block. Now we're ready to cut the block out. We're to the point now where we need to cut our dragster out of the styrofoam block. There's a couple different ways that we can do that. One is to use a styrofoam saw, or we could use a hot wire cutter like this one. If you use a saw, you simply take the top view and you move your saw back and forth, cutting through the styrofoam around your mark. When using a hot wire cutter, you need to keep your fingers away 
from the hot wire. We will cut out the top view of the dragster by placing the foam into the hot wire and it will cut as we go. Notice that we have several pieces which have fallen off the styrofoam blank. We'll put these back together in their original positions and tape all of it back together to cut out the side view. Once we have put the pieces back onto the dragster blank, we'll want to cut out the side view, but we want to be sure that where we taped the pieces back on will not interfere with our side view cutting. With the dragster blank laid on its side, we'll begin cutting around the contour lines as we did on the top. Once we've completed the cutting process, we'll remove the pieces that we cut off, revealing our dragster prototype. We now have a rough prototype of foam cut out, and as you can see, it really is rough. There's lots of edges that have styrations in them, and these corners are not rounded at all. What we want to do is take some styrofoam and begin sanding this prototype to smoothness. We'll begin sanding on the corners and we'll use 320 grit wet dry sandpaper. Now this can be a messy process so you may want to take your dragster outside to do this. Ask your teacher for advice on what to do here. Kids, as you're sanding, be careful because the styrofoam blank at this point may be a little bit fragile. So be sure while you're sanding to hold it tightly and not to break it. Once we have the prototype sanded down, let's compare it and see if it looks like our original concept sketch. And I believe it does. The other thing that we need to do at this point is to look at the prototype and determine if there are any portions of the prototype that we would like to change. For instance, I notice that this portion of this prototype is a little bit weak. Now obviously out of wood this will be stronger, but this concerns me that there's a little bit of flexibility there. Also I may reduce the mass or the size of this hub right here because this might uh, produce some drag as it's going down the track. So the prototype stage is a good place to make changes in your design before you actually start on your piece of wood. <coughs> this completes the dragster design process. Our next video will show you how to construct your CO2 dragster using either hand tools or power tools. Until then, see you real soon.